Hey guys, so Apple came out with their new Vision Pro, at least they announced it on June 5th, 2023. I'm recording this the day after. Should developers or aspiring developers look to jump on that bandwagon in terms of building apps for it? Well, short answer as far as I'm concerned is no. And uh, let me explain the reasons why I think most of us should not get into developing apps for this new device. Well, number one, I think it's highly, highly speculative at this point. I look at other VR implementations, VR, AR implementations. This is the Oculus. You can look at the numbers, check them out. Like how many of these units have they sold? How are the developers doing on this platform? Are they making money? Look at the type of apps that are doing well on this device or a similar device. That will give you an idea of what might work on the VR implementation or the AR or the headset implementation that Apple has just announced, which is only coming out in January in the US. My belief at this time is that these devices are highly, highly specialized. And so that means a niche market. I would jump into this if I had very specific domain knowledge. So let's say I was coming from, I don't know, the aerospace industry or some engineering industry where this type of augmented reality or you know projection uh, in terms of field of view, that type of thing might be useful to you. So that's very niche. Now, Apple was pitching their device with regards to basically having it as a replacement or an extension of your typical desktop or laptop experience where you would look at the Apple screen, the laptop screen, you look up and then it would, you would see whatever's on the screen in the uh, virtual reality world as projected by the device. I just don't see myself wanting to write papers with this goggle on my head or wanting to play with spreadsheets with a big headset on my head. So, you know, this is not cool. You know, it's even hard for me to drink my tea. I can't do it without spilling it myself. I don't see myself wanting to work on my spreadsheets or, as I said, uh, write out papers with a headset. It's much better to use a laptop, you know? So this is uh, not cool. Another thing that's problematic about the Apple implementation, their headset, apparently, I'm not 100% sure about this, but apparently theirs is heavier than this thing uh, because they're using uh, aluminum and whatever, uh, heavy, heavier materials. So apparently their headset is heavier. So that's why Apple has a little cord and a wire to a battery that you would put on your hip. Now that doesn't bother me for sit down stuff, but I have to tell you, I have some friends of mine, it, it drives them bananas to think that you would have to have a tether your 3,500 US dollar uh, headphone, um, headset, we'll call it to uh, a separate battery. Now they're doing that because of the weight. And according to that, uh, that guy, MKBHD or whatever his name is, he was saying that uh, the Apple's uh, Vision Pro is actually heavier than other, uh, other headsets. So I'm assuming he's talking about this thing here. So I don't know, this is the uh, Meta Oculus. I think it's Quest 1. This is the first version. And I got the super modified head strap. I, I bought this personally simply to do the boxing game. Okay, I'll stop. You see, just after like two, three minutes, I was getting too heavy on my head. So I don't think if you're a business app developer, uh, for the most part, I don't think people are going to be wanting to wear anything like this to uh, interact with spreadsheets and presentations. I see these as something you would use in highly specialized environments, gaming, where you might want to do some visual stuff or you know maybe you're involved in engineering so it's very niche very speculative so i would only jump into that kind of development if i was already in an industry related to that gaming is an option though gaming is an option but again i'm not sure what the market will be for that but you can go look at the oculus marketplace because they're pretty well established now and see what's going on there you could probably pull out some data and figure out where the demand is and so you can decide whether or not you want to get into it. it. It would probably be fun to write software for these type of devices. There's no question about that. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be highly niche, meaning for every highly niche, excuse me. So for every job building 
So for every job building apps or a, a device like this, there's probably 10,000 web development jobs. You know, no exaggeration, if not 100,000. It's, it's the way it is. This reminds me when the iPhone first came out and uh, with the iPhone, at the time, it was considered to be a ridiculously expensive device by a lot of people. So it was like 500 bucks or 600 bucks, which seems cheap by today's standards, but at the time. And even uh, famously, uh, the head of Microsoft was laughing at it, but you know, it became a super big success because the use case, the touchscreen, the multi-touch and all that stuff, was very compelling, very compelling. So it, you know, there's huge lineups outside of Apple. So that screamed, okay, developers, let's jump on, let's jump in on this with the App Store. And early adopters in terms of developers who jumped into the iOS development game, a lot of them did well. But within a certain period of time, I don't know, it was two years, three years, something like that, that market became so saturated and flooded that I remember I saw a study where they found that the average iOS developer independent was making 500 bucks a month. Not very good. You might as well work at Starbucks at that point and not have to worry about development. So that's the gamble with these type of devices, these virtual reality devices, whatever you want to call them. Um, are they going to be profitable for you as a developer if you jump in early? That's the risk. I don't think these things, and I could be wrong, at least in their current form factor, I find they're too heavy and bulky. I don't think these things are going to be uh, widely adopted. They have to be reduced in weight and size. Like the new one is just coming out, they just announced, it's 40% smaller, so a lot smaller, which is cool. Because this is okay for like 20 minutes, half an hour max for, for, my, for me. Uh, so, but you know, uh, if you can reduce this by 40%, now I'm not sure what the weight is, what the weight is gonna be, but as soon as they can get this down by say 60, 70% and the weight accordingly, then I think you have something that is much more, um, something you could wear for a couple hours perhaps. But in this current form, no chance, at least not for me. And the Apple device apparently is heavier than this, uh, as far as I know. So not good. So what are my steps in conclusion? Number one, if you are in a highly specialized business area, like you know aerospace or, or type of, specialized, maybe gaming, indie gaming, or something like that, where this type of experience, this fully immersive experience, would be, uh, could be useful, then maybe I would explore it from that point of view. But if you're just a general developer who develops business apps and so on, no, I don't think it's gonna be any opportunity for you there. What I would suggest if you're just interested in it, maybe you know, explore it. You know, if you're already an iOS developer and whatnot, yeah, just jump in, play a little bit. You know, it's like a side project, little game. See what shakes out. But it looks to me it's going to be like uh, blockchain. Maybe not as niche as blockchain, but as I, you can go watch my videos from years ago. I said that blockchain development was not going to take over the world. Blockchain development was not going to be the panacea that the blockchain pumpers were saying it would be. It never developed. It was never going to develop into that. Blockchain's cool, but it's just a distributed database, and it's a very, very specialized application. Uh, it doesn't mean the technology is no good. It just means that very few people really need it. I think more people might be attracted to this, especially when they can get the prices down. Like, this is reasonably priced. I think it's like 400 bucks or something. Um, but its form factor is still a little bit too clunky and bulky for my taste. Don't get me wrong, the Apple device has far more resolution and capability, and it sounds cool, but you have to ask yourself, all that capability is really useful. Is it really impact people's lives in a significant way? So yeah, it scans your eyes, you can look at icons on the screen and, and click them virtually, but you can do that with, you know, with a, uh, your laptop and a mouse, you know, boop, boop, boop. I'm not sure if it's transformative or any better. The thing about the iPhone and the touch screens is that you could, you know, you're a mobile with your web, you're a mobile, you can move around, you know, and you can interact with the screen like this as opposed to clicking on a keyboard like with the Blackberry. 
that made a difference. But looking at spreadsheets or Word presentations uh, with this device, yeah, I think it's highly specialized, as I said, engineering application, maybe medical application, gaming, of course. Uh, but I'm not sure how long you're gonna stay in it. That said, I, my friend has the Sony uh, headset, which is actually tethered to, uh, to their device, which again, pisses off some of my friends. I did some of their Star Wars games a couple of years ago. That was pretty cool. That was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. But could I do it for hours and on, on end? No chance. All right, I hope this is useful to you. I'm always looking at software from the point of view, not just the technology, but in terms of the job opportunities and the financial, how you can financially benefit from a particular technology. What are the, uh, I look at it you know, from getting a job to freelancing to maybe starting your own business. Again, everything I talk about and teach is based on personal experience. I've been doing this since 1994, if you don't know me. So yeah, that's it. That's my take on that. Um, if you're purely into coding or interested in coding for job opportunities or freelance opportunities, uh, the opportunity is likely not here. The opportunity is going to be on the web. Still is the web, the web, good old web, web development. That's where the money is, especially freelance. Why? Because if you're a freelancer, you're mostly working, working for small business. And small businesses, uh, they don't need iOS developers very often. They don't need, they're not going to need uh, uh, Vision Pro developers. They're going to need web apps. They're going to be working on their WordPress sites or Shopify sites. They're going to want uh, their Drupal sites, that kind of stuff. There's so much of that code out there, that legacy code. There's so much demand for that that you make a fortune doing that. Anyway, but don't let that uh, dissuade you. Don't let that uh, put you off if you're just genuinely interested in developing the apps for these devices. Just understand that it's niche. It's going to be harder to find work. Not impossible, but harder to find work doing this potentially than doing web, especially freelance. Well, freelance, forget about it. You're not going to do freelance doing this kind of development. So let me know what your thoughts are below. You know, Give me some comments. You know, Challenge me, if you will. I don't mind. I love being proven wrong. Occasionally it does happen. I love being proven wrong because that means I learned something new. And whenever you learn something new, you're better off and uh, it's good for your brain and it's good for your ego as well. Cheers, guys.